Good morning, everyone. How are we today? Oh, lovely. Oh, because I was just about to say, let's quickly check in. How are you all today? Give me a thumbs up or a wave for those of you still on screen and the others behind. behind. Yes. Um, it's really lovely to see uh, some familiar faces and to see some new and it's a pleasure to meet you virtually, for those I haven't uh, met before. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen. Okay, everyone see that okay? Lovely, that's what we like. Uh, okay, and Julian, thank you ever so much. Um, that was really, really interesting. And uh, of course, you're going to need a motivated and engaged team to deliver your business plan. So that's kind of what I'm, I'm going to look at. Um, so I know Kev gave me a, a very nice uh, introduction, um, but a bit you might not know about me is uh, I've worked in hospitality some <coughs> 35 years, but obviously I look a lot younger. You can all agree if you like. Um, but seriously, in November 2019, uh, I did a mental health first aid uh, training. And um, initially I did this because I wanted to better understand and support a close friend of mine who was going through some quite um, heavy stuff. And um, something that really stood out for me on the training was that one in four people experience at least one diagnosable mental health issue in one year. So let's take a moment to think about that. One in four. So we probably all know someone who's had a mental health challenge, but have they told us, have they shared that with us? That scary figure of one in four has really inspired me towards a counselling qualification. So I'm, I'm on my level three at the minute. I've got a little bit of way to go, uh, but I found it really useful um, for me personally, but also in my professional life, because I'm just more aware of uh, you know the people I'm dealing with, particularly when I'm I'm training. Uh, people might have external issues that they're dealing with that day, so I'm really passionate about the subject. So don't get me started or shut up. Um, but um, so what I'm going to do in this 10, 15 to 20 minute um, session is share my thoughts and observations on um, helping you support, motivate, and engage your teams coming back to work and. Um, really with a special focus being on well-being support. Okay, so let's give a go on the slide. Like my road there, your road map. <laughs> so, um, you know, I've been thinking about how to, to uh, visually uh, do this presentation really. And um, thinking about the steps back to work, um, I thought I'd put a roadmap together, which I hope will, will be helpful. So I thought I'd call it the return to work journey um, because we have to take several steps um, to get to where we want to be. Sometimes there's a few bumps in the road for some of us. It's not always the easiest quick trip, um, but um, uh, you know, let, let's look at the steps that, that might help. And so much has changed in the world and um, there's so much to get used to and get our head around. And gosh, you know, I was thinking, where do, you, where do we start? Where do we start on the, you know, the year that we've had so far? You know, what a tumultuous and uncertain year for all of us. And that's professionally, personally, um, but, but it's also time for change, perhaps. Creativity and opportunity of doing things differently um, in the future. So it's going to be really important re-engaging our teams um, into, the, into the right mindset. Um, and that will then be a key for success. So along with your business planning, you need to have your engaged and motivated team behind you. And I think, you know, we probably all feel a bit fragile and have anxieties uh, and worries uh, on our mind. And, you know, and so will our teams returning to work. Um, and although we're in lockdown, this is an opportunity to get ready to welcome and encourage our teams um, back to work. Um, and then, you know, this is about building a strong well-being or human, if you like, company culture 
uh, and, and really uh, a basis of putting people first. So my suggestion is, if you haven't got something like that in place, I'm sure you are having regular um, conversations with your team members uh, and colleagues, but start planning this now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I've put these steps together and I hope that they'll be helpful and we'll work through these over the next 15 uh, to 20 minutes. So the first step is reassurance. And this is about being human, putting people first. Consider people's safety, uh, their mental health and well-being, and, and having a, a culture about being open and supportive about any anxieties um, they may have. And I think it's about giving people time to settle in. And I, what I will do is I'll assume you've got all the safety protocols in place. Gosh, I think we're all pretty used to those now, aren't we? <laughs> I think we've all uh, got used to that personally and uh, in our businesses. Um, so the next step would be about um, re-engaging people. So we've, we've got the, the wellbeing culture in place. Um, and this is about reintroducing your team uh, to business and uh, also recognition of how they've contributed. Um, they'll also be looking for job security and opportunities for growth. And I'll go into that a bit about actually how important that is um, to people. Um, and the next step, really, once you've done that, is to um, is to think about retraining. Jobs might have been reassigned. I've certainly heard of, of that quite a bit. Uh, you know, new skills might be needed. Uh, some people are working in, in two or three different departments because they're covering different roles. Um, and, and what also might have happened is there might be new business goals, new operating standards, the values of vision and values of the company have changed. So we need to be really clear about that for people. What are the goals and objectives? Um, and I know Julian talked about this um, as well. The next step, can you see here, they'll all start with R, see what I've done. <laughs> uh, so this step is, uh, we'll talk about realigning working practices. So this is kind of thinking about how the work landscape has changed. You know, a lot of us are working from home now. Uh, uh, the, the hours might be more flexible, you might need to think about locations where people are working, you know, and, and, and their role, you know, what, what do you expect from them? Um, and also, you know, what are their current personal circumstances? I mean, many of us are schooling from uh, our kids at home and uh, my colleague Sarah, we can't really um, uh, communicate really during the day because she's got the kids now and uh, it's quite amazing what as five-year-olds what she has to teach them <laughs> she has a lesson planner every day you know and so her time of work is in the evening so and we work around that as as a team because that you know that works for her so we need to think about that and the last uh, one is relate so i mean really with that is relationships um so this is um about ongoing working relationships, that sense of belonging, the culture of working in an open atmosphere, good and clear communication, um, you know, it's, it's colleagues supporting each other and the line manager, manager relationships. And it's also, uh, Julian said, it's about regular business updates, share that with your teams. That's really, really important. Okay, so I'm gonna stop talking for a minute. Don't be sad. <laughs> so uh, I'm assuming everyone's used chat before. Uh, so uh, at the bottom of your screen, there should be a chat uh, function. Um, and I'd really like to get your thoughts about how you think um, people are feeling about coming back to work. Uh, they might have been furloughed or they've been working from home all this time. Um, you know, some, some people are working now, of course, but some will be going back um, into face to face uh, roles when, when we're allowed. So just type into chat how you think people will be feeling at the moment, um, you know, in your teams or how you're feeling at the moment, too. Just one, one or two words, you know, your, your thoughts. That'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, 
Thank you. Yeah, apprehensive, nervous. Some will be energised, absolutely, yes. Yeah. So you've got a real mixture there, I think, of, of anxiety. Uh, but also, people can't wait to get um, seeing their uh, colleagues again, seeing guests again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, looking forward to anxious. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. So, absolutely agree with that. I think it's only normal. We're only human. Um, so, you've got anxieties, might be worried, uh, a bit nervous. But there's also some excitement as well. And, uh, you know, that I think we all crave to get back <laughs> seeing people again, don't we? And, um, you know, seeing our, our guests and our, our clients again. So we need to proactively support our teams. So having some procedures and tools in place uh, for when they return to work means we really want everybody, not just a few, to feel excited and motivated, don't we? And, you know, look forward to to seeing their colleagues and um, guests again. Okay, so let's think about how we can um, offer that reassurance. I put this picture there and I thought people are gonna say, you can't touch people. <laughs> this is a metaphorical uh, illustration. So we, we, we can't physically reassure our colleagues like this at the moment. Um, but we can create a culture of support and well-being that is kind of metaphorically hand-holding, if you like. Um, and if you think about it, um, if, if somebody starts a job, a new job, it might take them about three months to settle in and uh, sometimes longer. And we support them with full induction plans, reviews, you know, we'll talk to them all the time to help them through it. If you think about the backdrop we're in now, people are coming back to work. Can we honestly expect our teams on day one to pick up where they left off? You know, so we need to apply the same sorts of support there for them. Okay, so another one for you in chat. How many workers do you think will experience anxiety, depression, or problems relating to stress at any one time. So I'm going to give you some options. You can just type one of these in. Do you think it's one in 12, one in eight, one in six, or one in 10? So how many workers will experience anxiety, depression, or stress at any one time? One in 12, one in eight, one in six, or one in 10? Right, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. So I've got a mixture there of uh, one in six, one in eight, one in 10. Um, yeah, Gavin, you've picked up that it might be worse during because of lockdown as well. Yeah, one in six. Yeah, right, yeah. So I think, yeah, we've got a mixture mainly of one in six, one in eight. So it's actually one in six. You're right there. Uh, they'll experience depression, anxiety, or problems relating to stress at any one time. So that I just find that one in six, that's really common. And think about the size of your team. I think that really puts it into perspective. One in six. So I thought um it might be really interesting to share some um other stats with you from Mental Health First Aid England and uh, I ha there are so many, but I just pulled out some key ones I thought you'd be interested in. And um, I, I went through a lot of this on the mental health first aid uh, course. But again, I think this just puts this into perspective. And these are UK uh, figures. So this, you know, from research in 2018-19, stress, depression, or anxiety were responsible for 44% of all cases of work-related ill health and 54% of all working days lost due to health issues. That was 2018, 2019. So imagine what the landscape looks like now. And here is, here, here is, you'll like this one, Julian, this is a figure. <laughs> the Centre for Mental Health states 
that mental health at work costs the UK economy 34.9 billion a year. Every year, it costs a business £1,300 per employee where their mental health needs are unsupported. You can imagine if you're in a business with quite a few people, you know, that, that's not so, it, it's just so key. It's such a thing we need to really have part of our everyday way of, of working. We talk about absenteeism, we, we, you know, with that, we tend to think about general stuff, probably like um, people off sick, uh, you know, got a flu or something, or what we've got now, should uh, A time off for uh, bereavement, maybe, or they're, they're on holiday. Um, but, you know, there are other reasons sometimes people are off that you don't know about. They, they maybe not tell you. Um, so actually one in five people take a day off due to stress. And this is interesting. 90% of these people cited a different reason for their absence to their employers. So they didn't feel that, you know, I, I don't know if there, there does always seem to have been a bit of a stigma, doesn't there? And I know that's improved a lot with what's been going on lately. But 90% cited a different reason for their absence um, and I think that's that's um, that's sad and 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 this one really shocked me as well nine percent of employees who disclose mental health issues to their line manager so they did actually share what was going on nine percent reported being disciplined dismissed or demoted I find that quite shocking and, but I think, is that a lack of understanding or is it a lack of a supportive culture of well-being? You know, so it really is something to think about. So, chat again, please. I'd really like to know if any of you have come across the term presenteeism at work, presenteeism at work, and what you think that means. Just, just type a few words in what you think pre presenteeism at work means. there but not there, there in body but not in mind, being there in person and mind. Lights on but no one being at home, perception, being there in person, mind elsewhere, present but not there in mind. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a term that, you know, you've got that really, is they are actually at work, they are at their desk or they're, you know, in the hotel or wherever doing their work. But what it means is they're coming to work when they shouldn't. Uh, they could be sick, they've got, you know, mental health issues, they might be working really, really long hours, um, or they've got external issues going on that are really affecting their work. So. Although they're present at work, they're not being productive. And I think sometimes we've worked with people and you think, what have they done all day? You know, and you have this, this perception of, God, you know, what's going on there? And, you know, we just don't know what's going on for them personally. And so presenteeism accounts for two times more losses than absences. So it is, you know, it's really important. We've, again, got this culture and we're, we're talking about all of this. And this is interesting too. 69% of line managers say that supporting employee well-being is a core skill. You know, they believe it's a skill they should have, but only 13% have received mental health training. 35% of line managers reported a wish for basic training in common mental health conditions. You know, we want to know, I think, there's much more of an appetite to know. So again, when you think about planning what your wellbeing culture is going to look like, then this, this can be part of it. What I do want to do is share some positive news. <laughs> is 
where mental health issues are diagnosed, most are actually treatable. And through right support, most people will fully recover, um, you know, or be able to manage it day to day. So, you know, it's just that people just need to be able to feel that they can talk about it. So let's think about um, where you can go for advice or training if you kind of, you know, perhaps don't know where to where to start with it or you'd like a bit more information. Um, so, you know, just to say, uh, it's not a broad brush here. Every organization's culture is uh, unique um, and creating change around the mental health um, topic is, is complex. Um, so it's gonna require a multi-tiered approach but there are various organisations that, that can help you with this as well. So I've got some up on the, the slide here. Uh, so Mental Health First Aid England. Uh, there's an organisation called Stress Matters. There's a fantastic uh, Laura and James through there who are, who are brilliant. Um, uh, ch there's charities, Mind, Mental Health UK. There, there's lots of great resources out there. And also there's a lot of help tools on a government website as well there's a big thing about that um support for businesses as well as individuals so i'd, I'd definitely say have a look at that um, so organizations for instance like mental health first aid and and uh stress matters they offer online training at the moment when i went it was face to face but obviously things changed at the moment so you can still have mental health first aid training um and uh, I know Stress Matters do it and they'll do it across um, I think four or five mornings across a week so you're not out of the business you know it's just a little bit every day it's quite a heavy topic obviously to look at uh, and you'd also get sent this uh, I've got it here I've got this massive oh, get this massive book as well which is great because you can refer to that and that's got loads of helpline numbers and all sorts of things for you um, you can also look at mental health first aid champions in your business, um, just becoming mental health aware. Everyone can go on this. It's a half day. Um, mental health awareness for line managers. I recently sat in on that. Um, and I know some of you here today have had uh, some of this training and, and have told me you found it, you know, really, really useful. The other thing that's uh, happening more now is um, employee assistance programs or EAPs. So I don't know if any of you've uh, come across those. Um, what, what that means is you'll work with an organization providing this. Um, and this gives employees 24 seven, 365 days a year wellbeing support. So they can just go on, have a look at uh, webinars, fact sheets, articles, um, you can you know, have an app on your phone as well, so you can access it at any time. Um, and uh, there are self-help programs. Uh, you can have like uh, uh, counselling, online counselling. Uh, you can have online health checks and there's a confidential helpline. So I think really as a minimum, this is something that, you know, you could put in place if you haven't already, uh, you know, pretty quickly really. Um, and then, you know, employees who, f who feel uh, you know, there's proactive caring support on their side. Um, you know, you'll find their well-being is enhanced, and um, you know, you can use it too. Of course, uh, absence levels will will start to reduce, and your productivity will will increase. So EAPs are becoming much more common now. Um, and you know, I was thinking about this as well. You know, if I was looking for a new job, I'm going to be kind of wanting to see that an organisation places well-being as a priority um, you know what sort of things can have they got in place to help me uh, or to go to if I if I need to uh, who can I talk to at work if I need to so you know again having this in place is is, is really valuable um, I'm sure a lot of you are I'm a member of the Institute of Hospitality um, and they just launched uh, support for its members um, uh, employee assistance program uh, and they're doing this through Health Assured, and they're one of the main uh, companies that do this. Um, but there's Booper, AXA, whatever, of the similar things. Um, and um, so, you know, I thought that was great. And I'm a member and I'm not paying for that. They're offering that, which is in the industry, I think is, is I haven't seen that anywhere else in a membership organisation. So, 
you know, I think that's that's great. So you could always have a look at that, and see, you know, see what see what you think first. Um, so, you know, you put in place your um, safety, uh, your mental health and well-being support. So now we need to look onto the next stage, which is re-engaging your team. And so apart from ensuring you have um, regular one-to-ones, um, you know, you, now is the time to engage your teams and they're going to want to know they've got job security and, uh, you know, uh, opportunities for uh, growth as well and career progression because that's really important to people. Um, so let's have a look at that. Wow. So he's a bit engaged, this guy, you could say. He looks pretty tuned in. Uh, he's probably had a few more, few than a, more than a few coffees this morning <laughs> or something else, but we, you know, I don't know. It's not for me to say. Um, but again, just to give you a bit of research here, um, findings from recent research at Learning Magazine show that, uh, yes, remuneration, benefits and rewards um, are common ways to show your teams are valued. Uh, you know, at this time, you might that might not be quite so viable to offer financial rewards um, and incentives in the short term. It could be something you work towards, but you know, things are tough at the moment. Um, but I'd like to think about, again, in chat, um, have a think about what percentage of employees value recognition above or over rewards or gifts. What percentage do you think of employees value recognition above rewards or gifts? I've briefly touched on that earlier. Yeah, 75%, 85%, high percentage, 75%, 70%, 80%, 75%. Yeah, absolutely. You're all very perceptive there. Over 80% of employees value recognition above any rewards um, or gifts. So we can do that, can't we? We can recognize people. We can thank them. We can thank them for their contribution. You know, if people feel appreciated, they're more actively engaged straight away, don't they? They know that what they do is um, recognised. So I think we can all relate to that. I'm definitely a person who needs um, praise. They can give me some afterwards, that's fine. <laughs> so people are um, more engaged if they can see there is potential for them to grow and develop the career in your organisation. So. You know, you might not be able to do something now, but, you know, just just think about that. And, you know, who, whoever is in your team, there might have been quite a lot of changes, actually. Just make sure they're reassured and they're recognised as part of the team. Remember to sit down with people individually and see how they are. Let them know that wellbeing support is available and find out from them uh, what their objectives, uh, their objectives, what, what, what they'd like out of role. But this is an opportunity for you to set clear objectives, goals and expectations as well. I think, you know, I think we'd all agree people really thrive on, on direction. So, you know, support and well-being, but also clear goals as well. So I'm not saying everybody's, you want everybody walking around like this crazy man. Uh, he looks like he's definitely had something, you know, maybe to, to get him that engaged. But but you do want everyone to um, feel part of your company's vision and journey, I think. You really, you really do. Right, I can't look at this man anymore. Let's move him on. So the next step is about uh, retraining or training. Uh, people may have been reassigned new, uh, and they you know, need new skills. They may be, as we said before, doing several different roles and you know, they need time to learn. They need time to um, settle in. Um, and um, you know, I was talking to a colleague the other day who does health and safety uh, training uh, and she was working with a, a team of housekeepers from a hotel. And uh, she said they made the comment that, um, you know, uh, they, they haven't worked in a hotel or cleaned rooms for quite a while. And 
there has to be uh, an understanding that um, from day one to go back in and do 20 rooms is going to be hard physically because the stamina is perhaps not there as it was before, as well as them knowing all the new cleaning standards. So it's just kind of thinking, right, people perhaps they need to start on a few less rooms to start with and build up to, you know, just bear these things in mind. And God, don't we know, we're on it now, technology. It's become so technology heavy. I know it was always moving that way, but we have to help our teams with that. There's been new apps introduced for, to guests, uh, you know, for them to check in and to maybe order rooms, you know, all that sort of thing. And, and there's a lot more communication ta uh, taking place online. Um, so, you know, you need to ensure your teams know how to how to use these tools and are, are comfortable with it. I mean, I sometimes on my uh, counselling course, we use Microsoft Teams. So I don't know if any of you use that. I'm so used to Zoom. I feel like sometimes I'm a bit like, oh, I don't know what to do, oh, you know, so I've got to, you know, get my head around that. But, um, you know, principles are generally the same. But, you know, we all still have to learn bits and pieces, you know. Um, so one of the things about training is, um, you know, make it make it available, make it accessible. Um, so one of the ways you can do this was, is with an online learning management system. Um, it's a great way to have 24 hour access uh, to online learning and, uh, you know, it builds consistency of key messages and procedures amongst all team members as well. So I'm going to share with you a little um, case study here uh, of um, a hotel group that we recently worked with called The Resident. So I don't know if any of you know the hotels at all. Uh, they're a luxury hotel group. They have... Um, uh, uh, four hotels in London and one in Liverpool. Uh, in the first lockdown, they decided they wanted to keep their furlough teams um, encouraged and engaged. And whilst training um, uh, was voluntary because they were on furlough, um, it, it, we've had some really great results. So um, there was a number of bespoke training units built with 10 main training modules. And these were accessible all the time, 24 seven on this uh, system. And during the first lockdown, 85% of furloughed team members were voluntarily consistently logging on. And to date, um, uh, 18 live online learning sessions have been carried out uh, and 65 training units. And their feedback is they say it's enabled them to stay motivated and, um, you know, they're ready to return to work. Um, and, and they also felt the connection between their colleagues and managers uh, was really important as well so although they're all at home you know that that's all in place for them so that might be something um, to think about doing some um, online training that way and then we're just getting to the last couple of steps now um, reset so your traditional business model is going to probably have changed so think about changing working hours work locations um, and things like that Think about maybe short term working um, to reintroduce employees uh, to the workplace whilst uh, that potentially can reduce salary costs. Think about how the business can contribute and supporting the local community as well. People find giving something back uh, is extremely rewarding and good, you know, for their engaging and, and their well being as well. But above all, allow them time to readjust. You know, this is about providing support, keeping everyone safe and creating that um, sense of belonging. And then the last um, one to look at is relate or relationships. We know it hasn't been busy over the last year and we've had a tough time personally and professionally. And guess what? We're only human. We're only human. Um, so. When we think about um, our teams, you know, it's it, all it is is about developing a positive mindset and building resilience. So I just want to quickly show you this. Probably back to front. <laughs> this little book here, just to show you uh, how I think this is so great. 
So, you know, Timpsons, the uh, shoe repairers, key cutters, whatever, pretty much all of them are at a supermarket. They produced this uh, guide to mental health at work um, to help colleague, colleagues cope with stress and depression. And it's lovely. It's just very simple, you know, illustration. I actually bought this for a pound in Timpsons. So they've actually, they're selling them to uh, their customers. This was published in 2019. So I think what an amazing uh, commitment to the employees and community. Uh, and the proceeds also go towards uh, Heads Together charity. So I just wanted to see you to the extent that some organisations are going to. So I just kind of want to say that it's okay to let people know the future might look different to what we all expected. You know, it's not a weakness as a business. It's a sign of transparency and looking to the future. It's okay to say you're processing some issues and you don't have all the answers. Things are changing all the time. And it's okay to let people know there'll be some changes without being able to give details yet. But I think the thing here is that, and, and um, Julian said this, transparency is key. Transparency builds trust. And it does reinforce the message that we're all in this together. So it is about keeping communication up, uh, both business and personal, and, and remembering your team's well-being. You know, regular business updates are, are really important. So that's uh, that's the journey. That's the journey. In that's what I think. That <laughs> um, if you, I think ultimately, if your teams are looked after. They're motivated, engaged, trained and informed. You're going to have this great ethos and that ensures your teams are happy and, and you know, they'll relate to your guests, your customers and offer amazing guest service. So I just want to say that, you know, we're only human. Be aware of each other and how individual we all are. Show empathy and listen. You know, ask how are you today and I think it's okay you don't have to have all the answers just know that listening is enough sometimes so really we've been on a relentless cycle of pauses I saw this picture and I thought yeah it's pause restart pause restart isn't it it's just been happening all the time so let's look towards positive restart plan Keep talking to team members and have regular one-to-one. -one. And it's this thing, check in on them daily, check in on them. And I know that uh, it'd be great to be around our families and colleagues and guests again. Um, industry, have an industry bash here and there would be amazing. Um, I know I definitely need to get a few catch-ups in and a few sherries here and there maybe. So I do hope my thoughts have been helpful. Um, I'm around after this session if anyone wants to chat as well, but thank you very much. Thank you, Rose. Um, the, the mental health of the teams are, is, is, is key, I think, going forward. And uh, you know, we've all suffered in some way, shape or form. And uh, I know so relating to one of our venues, one of um, when they did open up for a few weeks, uh, the person I was talking to was saying, it's amazing, my team have done this job for 10, 15 years or more. So they walk in and it's all of a sudden you realise that they've forgotten everything and you're having to work and support them and get them through it. But yeah, and, and that was that came very true. Uh, a couple of questions for you, Rosebud. Yeah. Um, let me just find them. Work like that. Ha, uh, this one uh, for you, Rose, is how and where would I start putting together a mental health and well-being culture in place? Yeah, 
Yeah, well, I think probably, uh, you know, a good starting point is to is to perhaps work with an organisation to help you do that. Uh, it's quite complex. There's a lot of things. And, you know, when we think about well-being, you might want to think about health, you know, the health, physical health as support as well. Um, you know, there's a spiritual side for some people. There's quite a lot involved in, in well-being. Um, so I would, yeah, I would say uh, the um, the charities that I've mentioned, and, but also uh, Stress Matters. Uh, one of the things they do is is help put cultures, work with, and put a culture into an organisation. And, you know, people are going to want different things, maybe, not the full, the full support mechanism or or just parts so they can really help and ad advise um i would suggest but there, there will be other organizations out there okay thank you and interestingly we've got laura from stress matters as one of our guest speakers at some stage in the future haven't we claire you're on mute right yeah <laughs> she's great she's great yeah. um we have another question uh what are the costs involved to put team members on the mental health first aider courses and how many days and um, to implement an employee assistance. I'm not quite sure if I read that correctly. Yeah. Um, okay. I mean, uh, on average, I think from what I've seen, it's probably about 300 pounds uh, per delegate for mental health first aider. Uh, but that does vary. Sometimes there are offers out there. Mine was a little bit more when I did it face to face, but I think the price is reduced a little bit because it's online and they will do it across uh, a week rather than two okay. full days. Mm. Um, so that's quite good. And then you normally get homework, I think, every evening. So I'd say around about that. But I mean, I think if there was a few of you being put on from one organisation, mm. you know, they might specifically do it for you and, and do something. I don't know. Do it um, yeah, employee assistance programs, um, uh, you know, that varies. You can have sort of ad hoc where you pay for things ad hoc if, mm. if uh, team members uh, use the confidential line or what have you, um, or, um, you know, you pay an amount per employee. So, uh, I mean, I had a quick look at this, uh, you know, anything from £3.50 uh, an employee just to have the phone line or sort of £14 up if you're having the full uh, you know support tools there and it could be more I think perhaps if you start to want to have counselling as well um, but they've got fully qualified people on the end of the phone uh, who yeah qualified to offer you know support and counselling over the phone they know what they're doing. Super thank you very much um, has anyone else got any more questions for Rose? Thank you all very much. Uh, just, just one more thing. Bear with, bear with. Except it's not working. Uh, we, <laughs> for some reason, uh, we have another event coming up uh, fairly soon. Isn't that right, Claire? Two weeks today. Two weeks today and our guest speakers could you just remind us is robin williams robin williams doing um revenue reporting and forecasting and, and then some someone called claire lee from uh, venue some random. <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely doing um knowing your marketplace okay uh which is all very important and the marketplace is changing on a day-to-day -day basis at the moment uh, so the the Eventbrite uh, sign-on for that out. is has just gone out. Oh, so efficient! But just to remind you guys, we will send the slides out to to everyone that's been on screen with us today. It does have all of the contact details. If you do want to get in touch with Julian about his presentation and things that run true, and you feel you might need some support, give him a call. Same with Rose. Rose has already stated that she's in and around the office this, uh, later this afternoon. Feel free to get in touch with her too. And uh, may I thank you all for, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye -bye. Take good care. Keep safe. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, keep safe. Take care.